I'm going to try to make a pretty illustration, except I'm not going to use any color or any shading. I like drawing. However, I do not like color. This orange is actually green. Words of absolute madmen. The color people have played us for fools. But I still want to make a pretty illustration. I mean, all the illustrators I admire. I'll use color beautifully, but my brain is simply too small to understand how color works. So I was wondering, I wonder how far I can take it if I only use a pen tool and black and white for an illustration. For me, sketching is often the hardest part because I usually struggle a lot to get a sketch that I'm satisfied with. And I also have a really bad habit of getting worked up when I sit down and make an illustration because I feel this pressure that the illustration has to be good. It kind of feels like I should plan some different compositions and then do a whole bunch of thumbnails and try a whole bunch of things and make sure I get the best one possible. Uh, for this drawing though, I was experimenting a little bit. I try not to put too much pressure on myself this time. Just sort of YOLO a sketch out and see where it ends up. This character is based off a character I designed three years ago in a character design class by Jewfoot. Her name is Heather because she has lots of feathers on her head. I've drawn her many times since then, but never in armor except for the very first time I designed her. So this time I just wanted to give that a shot. For now, I'm just trying to make sure I get the big shapes right, and I'm not concerning myself too much with details just yet. I had already sketched in an arm earlier on, but um, it just didn't look right to me, so uh, I try again here, but it still doesn't look right. <laughs> well, as you know, if at first you don't succeed, just keep doing the same thing over and over again until maybe <laughs> this time it'll work for real for real. <laughs> Because of my manner of speech, I come off as younger than I actually am. It's all camouflage though. I have learnt your ways so I can walk amongst you, but I'm not really one of you. No cap on God. For real, for real. Uh, but anyway, so I do it a little differently. Uh, I end up going back to basics and try constructing the arm from cylinders so I can better understand the perspective this time. And after trying that, I realize that the arm should come out more towards the viewer. After I think about the anatomy a bit more, and once I finish the basic construction, I can start adding the armor on top of the basic shapes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I think I was psyching myself a little bit too much about art, and I was like, oh well, every sketch I do has to be good and has to be something, but just kind of like aimless sketching and see where, where it ends up. And that's what I want to do more of, which is why I did this drawing. I should technically be doing my art homework, but I've gotten the rough sketch done now. I'll do a quick values check to make sure this reads properly, and then I guess I'll start cleaning this sketch up a bit. All colors have a lightness or a darkness to them. So how good a composition is, is very dependent on the way that these values are arranged. When you're scrolling past Instagram or Twitter or just glancing at an image, you only have a very short time to make an impression with your visual art, right? So you want to make sure that the composition really grabs at them right away. So basically I'm saying it's a good idea to check for values early on before spending more time on the drawing to make sure that the illustration as a whole is readable and that it looks good. At this point, I know that I want the illustration to be monochrome with a highlight color on the flag, maybe like red or something. I think red looks good. Yeah, I think this is fine. Let's make a more detailed sketch. As you might have noticed, having to go over a sketch over and over is pretty time consuming. I used to be really self-conscious about being slow because there are incredible artists that are able to draw very accurately, in great detail, with no sketch underneath, just like one take okay. Such as, for instance, the great Kim Jong-gi, uh, rest in peace. I feel like people watch these insane artists and they enter some kind of Kim Jong-gi phase where they try to draw without a sketch because uh, these amazing artists are so cool and so inspiring. And not only that, being able to just YOLO a sketch out there seems like a really efficient way to draw. And by people, I mean me. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm people. <laughs> I tried for an entire year. And eventually, it took me an entire year to realize this, eventually, I realized, turns out I'm an, I am not, in fact, Kim Jong-gi. 
Not only am I neither male nor Korean, but I'm simply not as skilled as him. I can't problem solve, form, composition, and detail at the same time. I need to tackle them separately. I need to split them up into steps. So that is what I'm doing right here. I am uh, splitting up the sketches into first the overall forms and then into details and handling these one at a time. I realize that simply copying his process won't make me draw like him because I simply don't have the same understanding, knowledge, and skill as Kim Jong-gi. So for me personally, it's better to take my time, draw slowly but correctly. It's a lot better than to draw quickly but incorrectly or just, I don't know, I used to trial and error out these lines, just draw a line over and over again till it looked good and I think in the long run that's actually slower than what I'm doing right now. It might take me longer, but it's better to draw slowly, but end up with the result I'm happy with, rather than quickly, but end up with an unsatisfactory drawing. You have to draw slow before you can draw fast. Maybe one day I'll be able to draw like Kim Jong-e, but honestly, I'm not really in a hurry. I'm just gonna take my time and do what I can do. Now we're trying to refine the armor shapes. I try to make the armor wing themed because she is an angel after all. So uh, I'm not exactly remembering here how armor works. It is pretty complicated. There are a lot of pieces. Seems like a good time to look up some reference, right? So uh, yeah, just to make it clear, reference is good. It makes your drawing better. It makes your drawing more accurate. It's just the smart thing to do. Am I using reference for the armor? Uh, I should be. Am I? Nope, I'm just making things up as I go. It's uh, really unfortunate that I'm not smart. <laughs> so, uh, maybe I'm not, I'm not sure about this. Looks a little like, you know, nipple tassels. <laughs> so maybe let's uh, leave that. Let's not do that. And smartness aside, I just thought it'd be good to try to draw from imagination this time, even if I know the end results isn't going to be as good. Like I said before, I have a problem stressing out about the final result of a drawing. So I decided that even if I know the result will actually be a little bit worse, I'm going to try just relaxing and doing what I, and uh, doing what I can from imagination. Okay, time to move on to the wings. Once again, had to stifle that instinct to immediately go onto Google or Pinterest and find some good reference to make the wings look better. Uh, however, luckily for me, this original character, which I've drawn quite a few times at this point, has eight entire wings on her head. So that's a lot of wing practice I've gotten over the years. So even my completely made up wings without reference look kind of okay. I have a very specific and logical order I choose to tackle my drawings in. I probably need to fix this hands, but I don't want to fix it right now. So what if I just do it later? This is a problem that future Pika can solve. The order is I draw the easiest things first and I leave the hardest for last because then maybe they'll draw themselves when I'm not paying attention. <sighs> I don't want to do the hands. Um, how I want to do the hands is a problem for later Pika because it seems hard. So uh, clearly here I was procrastinating drawing the detailed sketch of the hand as long as I possibly could, but unfortunately it could not be avoided forever. Uh, I hate drawing hands. I should use a reference, but I won't because I love making bad decisions. I decide on some claw-like gauntlets for some bird vibes and even more wing shapes. She already has eight wings on her head, why not just add more, right? You can't have too many wings with angels. Luckily for me, the hand doesn't take too long because I already had a base sketch in place. If I hadn't had that sketch in place, I probably would have taken ten times as long to draw this hand. Uh, now, the detailed sketch is done. Yeah, this is looking fine. Or should I let it stew? Should I go to sleep and see if it still looks good in the morning? Because uh, looking at it with fresh eyes tomorrow morning will probably help me spot any mistakes. Uh, so I'll let it cook for tonight and see how I feel about it tomorrow and then we'll, we'll resume the stream, shall we? All right, let's keep cracking on this. I've decided to tilt this drawing a little bit because adding a tilt seems to make every single composition better. Let's just fill in the values a little bit more here and we should be golden. Okay, let's just start butzing around with a pen tool and see what we can make of this, shall we? 
Inking is like my favorite part of drawing, so uh, I'm about to have a very good time right now. I usually have to redo the face when I do these, so I'll do the face on a separate layer, just in case. I know some people really hate line art, but honestly, it's my favorite part of the drawing. Line art is where you can really start solidifying the details of your drawing and where it really starts coming to life, if you know what I mean. Most of the difficult problems have already been solved by the sketch, so now it's just relaxing and doing the rest. Since I'm trying to avoid adding shading and rendering here, I try to add interest by adding detail with line art instead. Adding lots of lines, also known as hatching, also gives the effect of a darker value. And because I'm feeling crazy, I've decided I would like to draw every single individual individual like vein in the feather by hand, just because I think it would look cool. I also find drawing lots of little lines very meditative and calming, and it makes me feel like I'm progressing on the drawing without actually doing anything that's too difficult. The wing-like armor was challenging for me since I wanted it to look like wings, but more like a man-made sculpture of wings rather than actual wings, so I couldn't make it look too organic. Some people dislike inking, I am not one of these people. Inking is the best part of drawing and no one can change my mind about this. Here I'm adding some fake detail on the armor. I say fake because I wasn't actually thinking too hard about what the detail actually looked like, just some random scribbles, which makes it look like detail from a distance. So hopefully nobody inspects my drawing too closely. Hey, we're almost through half of the wings. We've finished this wing and we've almost... Why, why have I set myself up to do something like this? You know, this is kind of, this is kind of crazy. While working on the feathers, I uh, try to keep the lines fairly parallel. Sometimes I draw the lines further apart to get a general idea of the flow of the lines. Then I just fill in the rest of the lines in between. Sometimes while I'm continuing to do the line work, I find that I'm not quite satisfied with my base sketch or it's not clear enough for me to be able to add detail just yet. Which is no problem actually, I just go back to the sketch and adjust it if need be. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna fix those eyes, they're actually... The hell's this nonsense? What's this line? Get out of here. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to work on the face afterwards because uh, I started doing the face immediately after I started streaming, which meant it was the first thing I drew and I wasn't sufficiently warmed up yet. So um, yeah, let's redo these eyes, shall we? <laughs> In some places, I thicken the line to simulate ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is the lack of light when two surfaces get really close together. Uh, I'm not a master of light or anything, but uh, I, I know that it has nothing to do with the direction of the light. What happens here is that when two surfaces are super close, light can't get into the tiny little crevice, so that area tends to be really dark and in shadow because no light can get in. At this point, I'm thinking it'd be nice to make the bits under the armor plates a little darker to make the armor shape stand out even more, since I spent so much time on them. Y using lines, of course, I'm not planning on shading anything. I finish hatching the stomach and the thigh area in this way, but uh, when I'm done, I realize that it doesn't really look rounded enough, especially on the legs. Well, it's a good thing I did the hatching on a new layer. I can just try again, but this time hatching horizontally and following the form more. That's the nice thing about digital art versus traditional art. You can always try stuff to see how it looks. Overall, I'm quite pleased about how much more dimensional the horizontal hatching looks. All right, where's my pen? Let's start drawing these lines then. Um, if only I could find where my stuff is. I hope you guys are doing better than me. Well, I hope I'll be feeling better tomorrow, at least. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day. At least I have good old line art to rely on. Line art always makes me feel better. I got no clue how the arm armor works, and I probably have to redraw it. So before I do that, I'll just sort of... Butts around here and draw some lines to make it look detailed and cool. 
Alright, time for some more fake detail on the leg armor. You know guys, um, recently, you know, on Twitter, people have been posting their old artwork. And I did too, because I'm basic and I like to, um, you know, I wanted to join in the fun. So I did as well. And I just looked at this and I realized even when I was a wee tot, well at this point I think I was like in my mid-teens or something, I wasn't that young. Um, I still really liked wings. I've had a thing for wings my entire life, apparently. Yeah, this is actually Heather's mother. Okay, time to start some work on the raised arm, which was probably the most challenging part of the drawing for me. I find the elbow guard, also known as a cooter, tricky because it's a complex 3D form, and there's also lots of these overlapping parts that all have to work together and make sense. Of course, I only had myself to blame for that part because I could have designed some simpler armor. I'm also dreading the armpit area because drawing raised arms has always been something I've struggled with. Uh, so I go with some swoopy, improbable cuff on the upper arm. It would have made more sense if I added some belts or fasteners to attach it, but I actually didn't add them on purpose because I didn't want my armor to look too grounded or too realistic. Like, I wanted a magical, high fantasy feeling. Like, who knows, maybe in her universe, in heaven or wherever, armor just magically sticks to the skin or something. Okay, so now the bits under the armor of the raised arm also need to be darkened for contrast and clarity. I start by kind of sketching in the basic form of the arm. So it goes something like this, I think. I tried to go for the same treatment that I've used for the tummy and for the legs, just horizontal lines following the form. Unfortunately, the armpit is a very complicated shape and it just looks chaotic and confusing when I try it here. I probably need to study the armpit a bit more. <laughs> I'm actually a little bit nervous about studying armpits too hard in public though because um... That has seemed to attract some people with some very intense opinions about armpits. Okay, I'm feeling kind of discouraged, so I do a single Hades run for some moral support. You know what? I'm tired. It's time for a break. A Hades break. Just one run, I promise. A single run. That was a pretty good run. I mean, I got a little bit further than last time. I'll beat him one day. I'll beat him one day. Oh, that's me. Uh, not really, because I fail, so then I try again with the armpit. This time trying to think a little bit harder about the underlying anatomy. It still looks bad. And I realized that maybe I was darkening it too much, so I tried hatching a little more lightly this time. Okay, uh, well, this looks a lot better to me. I'm finally finished with the line arts. Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to add shading, but maybe just adding some flat values to the character will really make her stand out. Just add a bit of value and then add this sort of like flaggy thing. I'm drawing a little flaggy thing. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. And this might be done. Little flaggy thing is a technical term. It is, I think. Even though I'm done with the line art, I'm still noticing that some parts could use a little more texture and contrast. I want some light hatching on this part, so... I'll put it in. It might take a while, but that's okay. Remember, sketching is like gotcha. Wait, do I have an entire YouTube video about that topic? Maybe I do. And I also add some very minimal shadows to the wings to make them look more dimensional. Wait, look, I know I said I wasn't gonna add shading, but uh, this barely counts, right? Anyway, rather than showing the texture by making the shadow have lots of different values, I can just add some detail to the edge of the shadow, which helps imply that texture without having to draw it directly. The flag is pretty simple and doesn't need too much work, but adding some basic hatching to it makes it look a little bit more like cloth. 
I make a last minute decision to add some quick highlights on the face to draw more attention to it. Uh, I guess the shading does make it better. Rump, rump, rump. After all this work I did to not add rendering, here I am. Rendering. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Okay, time for the final touches! I use a big soft brush to add some soft gradients to the edge of the drawing, like a bit like a vignette. Ah, uh, alright, maybe I'll make this bigger so you guys stop, stop give, calling her a five head. You know? Stop making fun of Heather's forehead. <laughs> ah, it's okay, I guess. A little bit of texture on the values for some extra interest, and we are done. That five head is really bothering me, though. Alright, no five head for her. And we are done! Thank you for watching. Um, maybe add a comment about the drawing if you liked it. Consider subscribing, and uh, have a good day. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching. Um, maybe comment with what you thought about the drawing. Maybe, I don't know, subscribe or something. Oh, <laughs> press the wrong toggle. If she shaves, it'll be like she has a bunch of chicken wings on her head. Just think of it that way, yeah?